Hi and welcome to week three of King Cole's Knit Along. Um, you may have noticed that in the background we've actually got the crochet cow behind us. I still have this, our current one, straight to America. But we'll be back shortly um, and yeah, display so you can have a look. Now this time we're going to look for week three at the uh, Sunshine Square and I'm going to show you how to do the sunshine because if you've never done this type of thing before it can be a little bit confusing and I just want to explain the differences between how we do the increasing. Um, so we'll crack on with that one now. Right, so let's crack on with the Sunshine Square. I will just point out they give me a base copy to start with and you guys get a really nice, pretty, well laid out version. So I'm, I'm on the basics. Um, I'm not going to show you how to knit the white square because that is probably too simple and I'm not going to waste your time on it. It's just a stocking stitch square that has a garter stitch border with it. Um, so having worked the previous weeks, I think that will be fairly self-explanatory. But I'm going to jump straight in to making the rays of sunshine. Um, I have made some earlier just so that you're not waiting for me to make five of these but I am going to show you how to make them because we use two different types of increasing um, as we start these and there's a couple of other things as we go along that I think it's worth mentioning for you. So I'm doing my little slip knot, <coughs> put that onto my needle and then you have the cast on of two stitches so that's the first one you cast on any way you like if you prefer the thumb method please do but i like the two needle cast on so you've got your two stitches to start with now we now need to increase to three stitches and pretty much the easiest way to do this is you knit your first stitch and then you knit <coughs> excuse me into the front and the back of the next stitch these are a little bit fiddly, but I've made that to three stitches there. And then you, for these, they want you to slip the first stitch. Now, because this is a purl row, I'm going to slip purl-wise. So I put my needle in as though I'm going to purl, but just slide it straight off. I don't actually work it. And then I purl the other two. Okay. These first ones are just a little bit fiddly, but they only take a very short time to make. Okay, <clears throat> so we're now on row three and this is where the increase, the way we want you to increase changes slightly. Now I'm on a knit row so for this one I'm going to slip it knit ways. So put your needle in as though you're going to knit and slip it straight off, don't work it. You then need to pick up that little bar in the middle and slide it back onto your left needle and then knit into the back of it. Now I'm going to show you that again so that because it's it's a bit fiddly if you've never done it. I need to knit my next stitch and then repeat. So it is fiddly, but you'll get there. Pick it up, slide it onto your left needle, and then it's quite tight at this point. Knit into the back of it, knit your last stitch. So you've now made five stitches. Don't worry, it's not the neatest of things at this point. It gets neater as you put more, more work into it. Every wrong side row for the first few rows, you slip. So slip one purl ways and then just purl to the end. Now for this we have to repeat this until we've got 13 stitches on the needle. So I'm going to slip the first stitch knit ways, pick up my loop and knit into the back of it. And that's called a make one and it's a really neat way of increasing your stitches. This time I need to knit three in the middle. This end is even more fiddly I think. So don't worry if you do feel to wrestle with it a little bit, just take your time, be really gentle with your stitches and your yarn. Now you can see I've got two, four, six, seven stitches. Okay. Slip this one purl ways, in purl ways, and off. And one, two, three, four. Six. Okay. It's 
turn that away. Slip it in its place. Pick it up. Slip it back on. Do a bigger crease. And it's been that guy up. Hopefully you can see that really clearly. Work it in into the back of it. Yeah, we're starting to get the aspect of this shape there. Slip her waist. Work it in. Slip one. And work the next one. You can see how we're getting a lovely, neat edging on the sides. Not far enough now. Slip on her ways. Get to the end. That's not lovely. So just one more of the girls to work. Slip on. I should have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Then you curl up this row as before, and then the next row after that is just slightly different. So for row 15, we're only increasing once. <coughs> so slip, make one, get to the end, and then we should have quite a few stitches on the needle. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. This is the final slip one curl to the end. So slip it curl ways. We're at this point where we've got these little, little triangles showing and each one has 14 stitches is what we need for the next row. So there's the ones I made earlier. And these are going to be your little stars. So those are the repeats for those. Now you cut off your yarn between each one till you get to the final one, then keep your yarn on your needle. And if you've popped them onto a spare needle that's fine. Um, you now need to get them all back, all facing the front, looking at you. Now the slight difference here is the next row we're going to work as a purl row even though it's the right side and if you look carefully at the picture you'll see that there's one little raised row of stitches that goes right round the edge of the sphere of the sun. So this is that row. So don't think the pattern's wrong, don't think you've gone wrong, you haven't. So for this we need to purl 13. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. And now we've got one stitch left from here and one from the next one. And we're going to purl both of those together. So put your needle through both and you're joining them. Don't worry if you end up with a slightly long stitch, you can neaten those off just by giving them a little gentle tug afterwards. 
then this time we're only purling 12 because we need to get to one stitch before the end of the next another triangle. Okay, so we're at our final stitch on the first stitch of the other. So don't cut your tails too short. Come on. Through both, pull them together. Give it a bit of a tug. Tip over. And three point. All two together. And then pull across this one. Pull two together. Give it a tug. Pull to the end. So, and now we have them all sewn together in a nice row and there's a ridge there that gives a bit of definition on the next step. step. Just in case you've never done um, how to make this into a circle, so we're going to start doing, we're going to do pearl rows, all the reverse rows are just pearl and then all the um, right side rows we've got various points to knit two together so that it pulls in and it actually makes a circle and you've just got a small seam. So I'm going to show you the first two or three rows of that just to show you how that works. Um, I won't go right through to the end because I don't think you'll need me to but we'll get to that point and then you'll be able to see how the, how the thing is pulling in and the sort of shape that you should be getting. So I'm just going to very quickly curl across these stitches. You're an experienced knitter, you'll probably know what's coming next, but if you're a new knitter, I think the more information the better. And I think it's great with these that you can maybe learn some techniques or ideas. So if you like toy knitting then there's certain techniques here that you would use in toy knitting and so you may find these useful later on. But, uh, the thing I do find with knitting is that there's always something new to learn so you never know everything. Although don't tell my colleagues I said that they, they don't know. We're right back at the beginning and these the next row is going to sort of set the scene for how we do the decreasing. So row three we've got knit two and then we're going to start a repeat going. So we've got knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the eight are in addition to the original knit two. Then we do knit two together and we're going to repeat this six times so one two three four five six seven eight knit two together one two three four five six seven eight knit two together Five, six, seven, eight. I was 
I say do this when you're fairly quiet and on your own because you don't want people interrupting you in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Knit two together. together and then we should have a knit four at the end which we do. Now you've now started to create a curl but you can't just see it yet. Every other row is a curl so I'll just quickly run through a curl. Hope some of the YouTube videos as you can fast forward this little clip if you wish. Or you can use the time you have to do the curl and not along with the video. So this time we do a knit one, then it's a knit seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, and knit two together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, knit two together. Two, three, four, together and each unit two together is a four in just to one side just in front of you and on your previous um, knit row five, six, seven. knit two together and then we should have five left which we do one two three four five now i won't go through the whole lot because you don't need to sit and see me knitting all those but you're starting to get now where it's knitting in and you'll start to get the pattern of flow going with, with where the decrease is coming and then eventually you will get down to just five stitches and at that point you cut off your yarn with a reasonable amount to sew through and then thread that through those last five stitches pull them up reasonably tight and then sew down the seam okay right well i hope you found that useful thanks for watching and we'll see you in week four